All right, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Before the video starts, there might be some background noise. There's a lot of, uh, I live in an apartment complex and there's a lot of, you know, movement and stuff. A lot of people here, but uh, yeah. So we're gonna, we're doing, we're gonna do another update video pretty much. Uh, this one's gonna be talking about three different things. Selling to Lords, selling workshops, and uh, best workshops as of 1.4.1. Uh, I have a script like always, it'll be on the screen right now, it'll also be in the description. And uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. So selling to Lords. So let's say you're going the smithing route or you have a lot of valuables because you fought in a lot of wars or you stole it from your wife, whatever you did, right? And let's say you go into your inventory and uh, as you can see right here, I have four of these. They're all worth about 100,000, right? So if we go to any town, like this town right here, right? We press trade. As you can see, they only have 58,000. So how how in the world are you going to sell this? Of course, you can sell this and buy some stuff out here to kind of equalize it. But what if you don't want to buy anything? What if you just want the dinars, right? Well, um, another way to sell things um, is to sell it to lords, right? Especially lords that have um, a huge amount of dinars. And the ones that have a huge amount of dinars are either rulers or owners of a lot of fiefs. How do you find this? Um, you can go to the encyclopedia, you can uh, go to kingdoms, pick any kingdom you want, right? He usually will have a lot of dinars. Also, some of his friends might have a lot of dinars. You can check, see how much fiefs they have and all of that, right? But um, Or you can just bump into a random person and they might have a lot of dinars as well. And uh, I'm gonna show you exactly uh, pretty much a transaction I'm gonna do with somebody that's in my army but before we do there is a downside to uh, this method of selling to Lords um, and it's and it doesn't matter if your reputation is negative or plus 100 you will pretty much it'll be the same rate so Lords typically will only pay 35 to 42 percent of the item value and the item value is um, the value you see in your inventory right here right it's not the value that's shown in the stores because if you go into this town again, right? We go to trade. Let's see if we can find a similar item, right? As you can see, this one's worth 300,000 if we want to buy it from them. But we have the same item. And if we want to sell it back, it would only be 100,000. So, Lords will only pay 35 to 42% of this value that you see in your inventory. Regardless of your reputation with the Lord that you're uh, dealing with. It could be negative or like I said, or plus 100. But in my opinion, regardless of the pay cut that you're gonna take, I think um, selling to Lords is a lot more worth it than just letting your items sit in your inventory. You know, they're pretty much useless in your inventory, but at least you can sell them off to Lords and gain something, right? So let's pretty much do a test, pretty much a test uh, trade, right? So we're gonna talk to Mateus. All right, now we're gonna go to, there's something to discuss. We have a proposal. And now we're going to put these four in. And I did the calculations for these four. Uh, they equal about 424,000. If pretty much of our inventory, right? That's how much it costs in our inventory. Now we can expect him to have between 35 to 42 percent of that that he will is willing to pay, right? So if we go here, we round this up. We can see that he's willing to pay about 171. If we round it up a little bit more, he's not willing to pay any more than that. So 171, if we put it back into the calculation, uh, we do 171,000 divided by 424,000. As you can see, that's about 40%, a little bit over with, right? And that's pretty much what you can expect, between 35 to 42% of the initial value. So um, that's pretty much what you can get from selling to Lords. But this 171 is a lot better than going to a, to a town like we did before. And the town not even having enough for one javelin, right? So... It's a good way to get dinars, pretty much. Now I'm going to go to my other save, and we're going to talk about the workshops, um, about selling workshops and the best 1.41 workshops. Alrighty, now we're back on my other save, and we're going to be talking about selling workshops. So this is more of a reminder for anybody who has a workshop and settlements that they do not own. We're going to talk about early game, mid game, and kind of um, owning your own kingdom and what workshops have to do with it, right? So uh, let's start it off. If you are not in any kingdom yet, let's say you just started off, your workshops are safe unless, your workshops are safe on anywhere of the map, right? Because kingdoms aren't gonna really form a war against you, uh, just out of the blue, because you're not a kingdom, you're just a little clan, 
and they usually do not form any wars against you. So most of the workshops that you have around anywhere are going to be safe unless you do something hostile towards the kingdom where your workshop is located in, right? So my workshops are located in the Southern Empire, as we can see right over here. These locations are all part of the Southern Empire. So they're safe, but if I was to, let's say, attack villagers that were running around a caravan, attack a lord, or even raid a village, right, in the Southern Empire, then um, what would happen is I would trigger a war with the Southern Empire with my clan. Even if I just started, they will trigger a war, and all your workshops, if they are under the Southern Empire, you know, banner, are completely gone. Just remember that. So before you do anything that's hostile, make sure your workshops are not under their the, the person who you're about to do harm to, right? Make sure they're not under their banner, you know? Um, now, if you are a vassal or a mercenary of the kingdom, make sure your vassals are part of the kingdom that you are a part of, right? So I was, the reason I chose the Southern Empire was because I was part of the Southern Empire as a mercenary, right? So if you are part of, the, let's say, the Southern Empire, for example, right? You don't want to really put a workshop, let's say, all the way over here because because they're not part of the Southern Empire or all the way over here because they're also not part of the Southern Empire. And I say this because let's say you put one in Varcheg, right? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden the Southern Empire says, okay, we are going to fight the uh, Vladians, right? That's what they're called. The red guys, right? We're going to fight them. All of a sudden your workshop disappears because guess what? You're part of the Southern Empire and they just started war with the people who your workshop is inside. So pretty much the people see you as an enemy as well and they will take away your workshop. So make sure if you're a mercenary or a vassal, right? Make sure that your um, your workshops are in a kingdom that you are a part of, right? If you're the Southern Empire, make sure that you know your workshops are in the Southern Empire. If you're Vladians, make sure they're over there. Because Zates, make sure they're over there. It's just going to make it a lot safer for you. Yes, of course, you can put one here. Uh, let's say over here. And you guys might never start war. But you never know. It's very random. Now, before making your own kingdom, right? So I made my own kingdom right over here, right? And I'm kind of risking it because I needed the extra gold. But what I suggest is, as you can see right here. Um, what I suggest is once you create your own kingdom you're very likely to start war with other kingdoms and other kingdoms will wage war with you. So what I would do personally is I would go to the workshops that you have and I would sell them. Now here's why I would sell them. So pretty much once the kingdom started, there's a huge chance of losing your other workshops because guess what? The Southern Empire might start a war with me the next day. I have no clue, right? But if you do sell your workshops that, that have been significantly doing, like been doing good, right? Um, your workshops are worth a lot more now if you try to sell them now. So I bought a lot of these workshops, and you can even check in my playthroughs, for about 13, 14 k a piece, right? And they've been doing very good for me. Plus, as you can see, if I sell this right now, I'm going to make 16 k If I sell this right now, I'm going to get a plain 16 k which is more than I invested. And I'm also going to get rid of the risk of, um, you know, having the Southern Empire turn against me and then losing all my workshops. And uh, I would suggest selling it because guess what? If you start your own kingdom, you have your own land, you are already going to make money from taxes and things of that nature, right? So the workshops are cool, but it's better to just sell them before you lose them, if that makes sense, right? Now, let's move on to the next uh, last thing pretty much of this video is the best workshops in terms of 1.4.1. So we're still going to be in this patch for a while until they take out the new patch. Um, and pretty much so the best workshops in my opinion and pretty much a lot of other people's opinion It goes like this tanneries smithies and brewery. Those are the top three in terms of earnings um, it's kind of weird because In mid game and early game tanneries are very very strong, but late game smithies for some reason overpass them, right? But tanneries are still gonna be top one top two regardless of end game or early game, right? And then breweries are always going to be good because guess what? There's a lot of grain on the map everywhere. So my suggestion is if you just started a game, do what I kind of did, as you can see in my, uh, what do you call it? In my uh, workshop screen right here, you can see I have four tanneries, right? These do very good, as you can see. I'm making about 600 plus for each single one 
which is amazing, right? You can also do smithies. They do make a little bit less until late game. I, I can't give you a reason. I try to find a reason, but for some reason, smithies, they kind of build up as the game progresses. Tanneries, they kind of fall off late game. And uh, breweries, they do stay the same because grain is everywhere, but, but breweries make significantly less. Breweries, you can see, make about 200 to 300 steady right but yeah hopefully uh these helped these uh suggestions selling to lords selling workshops and the best workshops um like always ask me questions and uh stay safe